This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 4, 1, Storing Data in Matrices. Before we begin this lesson, we need to define what it is to be a matrix. All a matrix is is a rectangular arrangement of objects or numbers. And if I have more than one matrix, we use the plural, which would be matrices. A matrix is made up of objects, and we, off, we, we call that an element. So in this matrix that you see here, all these elements represent dollar amounts and specifically here we're comparing median salaries of collegiate head coaches for three different sports and then based on the highest degree in institution grants they're shown below in dollars. So each of these elements is a dollar amount and it's, it's a way to basically organize our information. So we have across one row all the football median salaries based on the level of degree that the person would hold. We have in row two baseball and row three is basketball. So like I said, each individual dollar amount represent is called an element. Now we need to talk about dimensions. Dimensions of our matrices are written row by column. So this would be a matrix this matrix would be a three by four matrix because there are three rows by four columns. Before we begin exam the first example here, I just want to touch upon two more vocabulary words that were listed here in your notes. Equal matrices, just being sure that you understand that when two matrices are equal to each other, that means they have the same dimensions and the same elements corresponding in within the matrices. So they have to really look identical in order, th in order for them to be equal. And then the other piece that we'll discuss later on in this lesson is point matrix. So basically what they're doing is in a matrix they're representing an ordered pair. So x comma y is your ordered pair and so it's x over y in a matrix, in a two by one matrix. So now let's move on to the first example. I'm going to only show you the the problem part itself and then we'll um, have you s plug the data in to your matrix here. So the cell phone company offers a family plan and an individual plan. Five years ago the company had about six million family members, six million family plan and 9.4 individual plans. Three years ago there were 11.5 million family members 8.8 .8 million individuals and there were 13.6 family members and 10.2 million individual members last year. So the first thing I want you to do is is on the in the boxes below this screen I would like you to enter matrix 1 and matrix 2 data. So basically the first one is taking and entering the data in three rows and by two columns and then we're going to enter the same data in matrix two but we're going to do it in two rows by three columns. So go ahead stop the video right now and enter your data. So here you can see I've entered this information into my matrices. So I took the family plans five years ago, six, three years ago is 11.5 and one year ago is 13.6. And if you notice this first column then in the second set, in the set second matrix was gone or was put into a row form. And then the individual along the 531 went along the row here. So each matrix stores the same data, they just store it in a different way. So matrix one has three rows and two columns. Matrix, um, and it has dimensions then of three by two. Three rows, two columns. In matrix two, it has two rows and three columns. One, two, three. So the dimensions of that matrix are two by three. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to enter this information in and store the information into your into your CAS. So please stop the video at this time and get your CAS ready with a new document open to a calculator page, please. When storing matrices in our calculator, we need to first start out by clearing out our variables. So be sure to go to menu 
actions, delete variable, and then you can go ahead and type in M1 and enter, and then do it again and type in M2 and enter, so that everything should be cleared out. So the next thing we want to do is enter our matrix. So before we can begin, we have to get a template. So if you go control, and then if you hit the time sign, you'll have a, a dialog box come up, and you want to hit the multiple elements matrix, and we can tell it what kind of dimensions that we're going to have. And the first one we have is a 3 by 2, so we'll go ahead and change that, and then a template will come up. So go ahead and enter your data. Once you're done entering your data, you want to get your cursor on the outside, and then go ahead, ahead and hit Control Variable, which or Control Store, which is the blue that you're going for. And then you'll get the arrow, and you can call it now M1, and hit Enter. So now that's what is stored under M1. So go ahead now, pause your video, and enter matrix number 2. Earlier in the video I talked about a point matrix, and it's a way to s a set up a matrix for ordered pairs. So what we're going to do here in this activity is look at po our pentagon A, B, C, D, E, and we're going to put it in a matrix form. And so when we do that, we want to first decide, we always put our coordinates across to the top, A, B, C, D, E, and then our X, Y become our rows. So this is what a point matrix would look like. So we have multiple points in this figure, so we're going to go ahead and label or fill in our matrix here. I'm going to I I want you to pause the video and go ahead and fill in your matrix and check when you are finished. Here you have an example of what I've done. I know I c that popped up pretty fast, but I think you'll be okay. Now, I could write this in another way. All I would have to do is maintain order of vertices as I would walk around my figure. So I could put my matrix in order starting at C. I could go C, B, A, E, D. Or I could decide that I want to start with D and write my matrix in the order of D, C, B, A, E. But notice I'm still maintaining the order as I would walk around. My figure, I could even go in a backwards order. I could make, write my matrix B, C, D, E, A, all of which would be fine ways to write a matrix for this pentagon. We're going to skip step three of this activity as I don't, I haven't supplied you with the application f um, for entering your polygon into your calculator. But what I would like you to do is now plot the the pentagon with the title B A with the core I'm sorry with the coordinates B A C D E listed below, and then try and explain why it does not describe a pentagon. Stop the video now, and when you're finished plotting all those points, go ahead and start the video again. As you can see here, I've plotted my points for this pentagon. As I connect it, I have to follow the order that the vertices are in the matrix. So I need to connect B to A to C to D to E and back to B. And as you look at my pentagon there, I don't fit the definition of a a polygon because I have sides that intersect at other at places other than their endpoints. So this does not describe a pentagon. So when we organize our information in a matrix, in a point matrix, we want to make sure that we enter or we put them in a sequential order as we were, would walk around our, our polygon. So this concludes lesson 4-1.